cosmic cycles, cosmic patterns, and cycles of catastrophe. For decades, I've been searching for the truth. And tonight, we're going to put some of the pieces together about cosmic patterns and the cycles of catastrophe. And we need to look no further than the rock record, which has recorded time immemorial, the cosmic clock, time and time again. Each of those strips of dolomite equals a single catastrophe cycle. Laid out here by Randall Carlson a decade ago, overlaying geologic phenomena during the Ice Age with the procession of the equinoxes and the astrological cycle. The 26,000 year cosmic clock. It corresponds to the Ice Age core data. The only difference is the Ice Age cores show a 110,000 year cycle of epic proportion. And we'll get to that tonight. Welcome to the show. The role of geomagnetic field intensity in late quaternary evolution of humans and large mammals, a paper in May of 2019, lays down the argument for what is controlling mass extinctions and speciation on Earth. And it has everything to do with the cosmic clock. The waning magnetosphere, the magnetic excursion you're all living, happening now, has everything to do with the evolution of humans and large mammals. And tonight, we're going to dissect it all. We're going to start here with an outcrop of dolomite. Now, limestone deposits worldwide show the same episodic and periodic pattern of deposition. No matter where you are, you're going to get a limestone and a shale, and a limestone and a shale, and a limestone and a shale, just like you're looking at here. Now, every one of those blips represents one catastrophe cycle with a high stand and a low stand facies, which means environment. We can actually measure them and we can group them into packages of five or so. And this corresponds to the cosmic clock cycle, which runs on a 12,600 year periodicity. Now, when we say 26,000 years before present, that's plus or minus a few hundred years. But for at least the last quarter of a million years, we can lay down geologic phenomenon during the Ice Age on the procession of the equinoxes, the astrological wheel, or the cosmic clock cycle, however you want to decipher it. For many, this is the Iron Cross. For others, it's the Egyptian Ankh. It could be the Christian Cross. But all of these ancient symbols are warning us of the cosmic catastrophe cycle. In the last four or five decades, we've taken so many ice cores that we now have high resolution information about ice age temperature changes. And this reveals a bigger cycle, the 110,000 year extinction cycle. The last extinction happened 12,900 years ago. Prior to that, it was 130,000, 240,000, and 350,000 years ago, and so on. These major cosmic catastrophe cycles are all driven by the clock. Some are big, some are small, and some include magnetic excursions, which appear to be happening, well, every 26,000 years. We get one magnetic excursion every 26,000 and four catastrophic events every 26,000 years. So you get one at 20, at zero point, you get one 6,500 years later, 12,009, are you picking it up? 16,5, and then 20, and so on and so forth. 
Now, every four or five of these cycles is a big boom. And in the Epica data, you can't really resolve the five cycles. Here we clearly see one, two, three, maybe. In the green proxy data, we see one, two, three, four, maybe. And the ice volume, we see one, two, three, four, and maybe five, the complete set. But it's not always complete. It's variable, like all climate. But whatever's driving this baby is not variable. It's episodic and periodic and pretty regular. And tonight, you and I may get to the bottom of it because my entire life's work is on the subject of sedimentary rocks. And no matter where you go worldwide, in Europe, in Africa, in Australia, in the Northwest, Canada, you see the same cycles in sedimentary rocks. Boom, 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 boom. In some areas, you can clearly see the 100,000 year package from here to here with each of the cosmic catastrophe cycles. One, two, three, four, five. And then boom, the 110,000 year cycle. One, two, three, four, five. And then boom. And then again, come over here. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. And then one, two. So it's fun in the sun to come out here and do some geology. Here I can see a big 100,000 year cycle here and then here again. So 100,000 year, boom. And then one, two, three, four, five cycles. Five great years. And then boom. That 100,000 year cycle in one, two, three, four, five great cycles. And then boom, and it repeats. Let's come over to Canada. Look at these cycles. The Dolomites. And you could see that there's a high stand and a low stand. There are two strips per cycle. Can't really see it there. But you can definitely see it in the Dolomites where there is a a white layer and then a dark layer and a white layer and a dark layer and a white layer and a dark layer. This is the cosmic clock that you're witnessing in real time in sedimentary rocks. And, and you don't need me to prove it. Other scientists in the last 30 years have proven it. I just looked at all the rocks worldwide and my mind was blown because the same packaging, five to one, boom. And we know this is about 100,000 years and it's matching and matching again and again, and it's everywhere worldwide. It's like, wow, what did we miss? Well, we missed the magnetic excursion. We've only now known that the magnetic field has been altering quite rapidly in recent time. And now we have the science to prove it. Here you're looking at the magnetic field intensity from present back 45,000 years. The maze. The, the most major mass extinction was here at 41,000 years ago. The Lechamp magnetic excursion almost brought field intensity to zero. And the Neanderthals went extinct. And then we have a small magnetic excursion here at the Mono Lake, which barely did anything, but also resulted in mass extinctions at the Mono Lake level. We have multiple magnetic field fluctuations up to this point 21,000 years ago, which has no name. That's insane. And then the Younger Dryas event here at 12.9, the drop down in the field, a second drop down during the Younger Dryas. So we have the first Dryas, second Dryas, and Younger Dryas. And then we're back into the Holocene with a major sea level rise and a cooling 8,600 years ago, and then a rapid warming up to the interstadial where we're now experienced the next magnetic excursion quite rapidly. Since around 1800, the field intensity has dropped off markedly. And even more recently, even more markedly. And so many people are asking, well, when is the next event going to happen? Well, it's happening now and you're living it. You're living the next mass extinction. What does that mean? It means that in your lifetime, you probably won't die. But the things that will happen in the next few decades will be epic because we're, one of, we're on one of the up and downs. And in fact, we're on a pretty big down. 
Now, all the big downs correspond to mass extinctions and then instantaneous speciation, which also correspond to the debunking of evolution. So that brings us to the paper. The role of geomagnetic field intensity in late quaternary evolution of humans and large mammals. Now this paper, and you're looking at some of the data sets, corroborates the work of Niles Eldridge and Stephen Jay Gould back from the early 1990s, where they posited that Charles Darwin was full of shit. And I concur. There's not a single shred of evidence that evolution occurs at any level. There's no evidence of gradual evolution anywhere, in any basin, in any paleontological record of any species since the beginning of scientific collection in the modern age. In fact, what we see is quite markedly something more similar to this graph here where species exist through time, and then they end abruptly. And directly above that layer, there are multiple new species in the tree. So here we again see all these hominids existing, and they end instantaneously at a date, and there are dozens of new species on top of that. Now, what does that mean to you and I? Well, it means that evolution is controlled by the magnetic field of Earth to the right. The geomagnetic field intensity, when it ebbs and flows and drops, like the Lachamp, causes mass extinctions in all species. And directly above that, as the field intensity increases, hundreds of new species occur. In fact, it means geologically instantaneous speciation, which proves the work of punctuated equilibria from Niles Eldridge and Stephen Jay Gould. So kudos to them. And kudos to us listening that know that evolution is controlled by the sun, not by man. And it may be not only the magnetic excursion that it caused the losses, but it could be a solar flare as well. Because as the magnetic field wanes, the sun may outburst. There is evidence that these low points here, the Iceland Basin, 200 kilo years ago, the Le Champ at 42,000, and maybe some of these drop downs that Native Americans watched and witnessed in the heavens and some of the plasma discharge petroglyphs that ensued. This all corresponded to hominids having to go underground to survive because of the sun. Now, I just did an amazing podcast with Jay Widener on Reality Check. If you don't know about Jay Widener or Reality Check, please subscribe to the channel now. Jay's right over the uh, Continental Divide, over in the San Luis Valley. And he's a renowned filmmaker, author, and scholar, considered to be a modern-day Indiana Jones for his ongoing worldwide quest to find clues to mankind's spiritual destiny. And I think tonight we shot it out of the park with Jay Widener. And we're going to have him on the show, and there's more to come. So stay tuned for more Boom to Knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. Any questions, leave them below. I'd be happy to answer them. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do and gain more knowledge. The way you get to the bottom of it is doing your own research. Don't believe what everyone says until you've double-checked and triple-checked yourself, which is why we leave all the links below all of our podcasts for you to look into. We thank all of our one-time donors, our Patreons, and the heroes that share these videos. We are the hunted because we provide the facts. We love you. Be safe. That's a good one.